Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Blue Collar Style Reviews. We're going to talk today a little bit about laces. I've heard a lot of dialogue recently or seen a lot of dialogue online about different types of boot laces, a lot of questions and comments. I thought, hey, there's obviously a question or a demand, so let's continue the conversation. Let's do a video about this. We can talk about this some more. So what I've got here, just kind of a sampling of the random different types of boot laces you'll see. These are gonna be just the kind of boot laces that came with my Red Wing Iron Rangers. Not much to them, um, just a simple standard boot lace, a little shorter than I would like. I will say to Red Wing's credit, if you go to the store and ask them, they'll give you a longer pair. Not much in the way of color schemes that they offer, kind of just a standard brown and black. Do seem to be pretty durable over time. No aglets, just kind of a glued. that may break down over time. I didn't use them long enough to know. Just a standard Red Wing lace. A lot of people like them. Uh, they do stay tied well. They are pretty durable lace, seemingly, but uh, just not my speed. The other type of lace we'll talk about next is kind of this flat lace, right? You see these a lot. Flat wax boot lace. Um, I've got these. These go with my, these came on my Beckmans. I like them. Um, they work well for a Beckman and a dressier lace. They also look good on like a Wolverine Thousand Mile. I've got some of those on there. Actually, these might have come off of that. I think I've got one more pair that are slightly thinner in width. They're great for a dressier boot. Um, more commonly though, uh, with what I wear, or my denim and my Iron Rangers, uh, flat wax just doesn't work for me. I'm not a big fan of them, um, but there are guys who like them. There's nothing wrong with the boot. It is just a regular cotton lace. Um, they seem to do pretty well for a lot of guys, but again, just like a plastic aglet, really nothing there to speak of. The other one, and this is kind of a tra classic traditional boot lace. This is an oil tan leather. It's a really nice thick leather, and a lot of guys really like the leather. It's a very traditional look. They're durable. They're not overly expensive usually. Although we're talking about laces, right? So what's expensive for boot laces? These came on my custom nicks that I got for my wildland firefighting. I took these off of that because quite honestly, leather's not gonna whisk, these leather laces aren't gonna hold up in that kind of an environment. I went with a different lace for that purpose. The only other downside to using the, the leather laces that I have found personally, um, if you get a good one, they don't break. I know a lot of you guys have had a bad experience with leather laces breaking. Um, Get a good oil tan lace and you won't run into that problem. The problem that I have with the leather laces is that they tend to stretch out over the throughout the course of a day. They just give. And I like my boots to be really snug. Like I, I want my feet to be snug. Um, I need to know that I've got that support. And I just, I don't like my boots loose. Um, so I, I, the leather I have to tie multiple times throughout the day. Not because the knot comes loose, but because the laces being leather, they do stretch. I will say to their credit, in addition to being kind of that traditional look, you get a good knot in there nice and tight. These are designed to kind of place friction against themselves, so they will stay tied pretty well. So with that in mind, that's kind of been the biggest complaint about these that I've seen. This is just a standard paracord lace. And the big complaint about paracord laces typically that I hear from a lot of guys is that they don't stay tied real well. Now, I'm a paracord lace guy. I really like paracord laces. I've got them in, I think, all my boots at this point in time, um, with the exception of my wildland fire boots because they would just melt in the heat there. And, uh, you can, you can address the untying issue by simply double knotting it really good and snugging it up. And there's a couple other tying methods you can look at online. But because I'm a paracord lace guy, I want to spend a little bit of time talking about these. So I've got a couple of pairs of paracord laces from a couple different manufacturers. And the big conversations I've seen recently have been around these two brands. We've got on my right, we've got Mad Dog, and on my left, we have Pisgah. Mad Dog's out of Andover, Connecticut, and Pisgah's out of North Carolina, um, down by the state park of the same name. Um, I started with Pisgah, uh, worked with the guy, super nice guy, super friendly, easy to talk to, and was recently introduced to Mad Dog. And I gotta say, super nice guy, super easy to talk to, both people making a quality product made here in the United States with United States made paracord. Both offering metal aglets, um, as you can see. I'm um, not sure about the Pisgah, but I did talk to our friends over at Mad Dog. These are, they have an adhesive underneath the aglet as well. And both companies offer the aglets in multiple colors. I think what you can see here is kind of this antique brass. They also offer kind of this gunmetal color. I think they've got a couple others as well. I know that Mad Dog's, I think, got four different color aglets that he offers. Now, the one thing that I really do like about Mad Dog that I have not found with our Pisgah company um, is Mad Dog's got two different diameters of laces. And like my Wolverine Thousand Miles, the eyelets are a little smaller. So this four millimeter that is the standard that you'll find on the Pizkas and then on the Mad Dog laces, uh, or in Mad Dog, I should say, is a little tough to get through some of those eyelets. And if you use those lace keepers, these aglets are really tough to get through both brands, that four millimeter. Now, Mad Dog also offers a three millimeter. It's thinner. And I don't know if you can see that or if the video depicts it real well, but there is a considerable amount of diameter reduction 
on that three millimeter and it's it's nice it's a nice option now i don't know how much i'll use these 62 inches is a little bit long for me 50 inches is a little bit short for me the challenge is, is that's kind of the two standard sizes you'll find especially on the pizkas um, site and on the mad dog site that's just what they offer now i did reach out to mad dog and kind of explain my predicament and he said you know let me know and we'll make you a custom size and wouldn't you know it he did. He gave me the six extra inches that I needed, three inches on each side to give me just a little bit more on the laces without being so long and a 60 inch or 62 inch that I've got to wrap it multiple times around the ankle, which isn't bad on the Rangers, but when I'm doing a Beckman or a Wolverine Thousand Mile, it just looks goofy on a dress boot. Both companies are made here in the, again, small companies in the U.S., which I really like and prefer to deal with. They both have multiple different colorways that they offer. As again, I said, like the red wings and the, the oil skin leather, the oil tan leather, you're going to have very limited color schemes. I kind of like to dress my boots up with a little bit of color. The one concern that I have had with these Pizka, and I don't know if you can see it real well here, is they really kind of started to fray out. And I'm not sure... I don't know that it's going to damage the integrity of it, but it's been kind of frustrating. I mean, these navy blue ones just really have got some fraying going on. Now, to both their credit, they both do offer a lifetime warranty on their laces. Um, so there's that. And I think that if I remember correctly on the Mad Dog, and I think that Pizka's similar. In, they've got gunmetal, that antique brass, or antique bronze, depending on what they call it, a gold and silver. So that gunmetal, or gun barrel black, or gunmetal color. Good companies, good small people. The one thing I really do like about Mad Dog as well is it's a Marine Corps veteran owned and run. I'm not sure about Pizka, hadn't shared too much with me on that. Both have a, a variation of different colors. I do like them. They are small companies. Um, Paracord, guys, that's just the way I go. The other nice thing about it, I guess, is it makes for a good everyday carry item if you need something um, in a pinch, right? Um, can't necessarily say that about some of the others as well. But that's it, guys. So it's really a matter of personal preference. There are advantages and disadvantages to all of them. I'm really looking forward to getting these Kelly Green Mad Dogs into my Beckmans that you guys have seen on previous videos where they heated the resole. Um, not sure if you saw the lace I had in there at one point. These are the Frankenwich. And again, another really cool color from Pizka. It's a black, purple, and green. Um, but again, it's just, it's about six inches too short, right? Yeah, I know. That's what she said. So there you go, guys. Um, if you like the video, do me a favor. Throw us a like on here. If you got questions, throw it in the comments down below. Feel free to check us out on Instagram at, at blue underscore collar underscore style for more reviews on laces, boots, denim, hats, watches, guy stuff. Thanks, guys. Happy trails.